Hi dear students, welcome to Brilliant Qatar. Hope you are doing well. Here we have the next chapter from grade 11, the most important question discussion. Chapter number 3, classification of elements and periodicity in properties. You know the basic uh, concepts in this chapter that you studied. The beginning part of the chapter we are dealing with the discovery of the periodic table which include Dauber in a triad, its postulates, merits, that means merits and demerits, then Newland's law of octaves, its merits and demerits, then Mendeley's periodic table, then modern periodic table, right, Henry Mosley modern periodic table. So these are the beginning part of the chapter, most of them you have already studied in 10th grade. The basic part, the most important part of the chapter is, you know, the uh, different blocks of elements, the entire 118 elements in the periodic table we classified into four blocks, S block, P block, D block and F block, their general properties, their general electronic configuration, everything you have studied and they will ask questions from the majority of the questions from the trends in the periodic table. What are the trends in the periodic table? Atomic size, how it is varying down the group and across a period and uh, uh, ionic size, cation or anion, which one having bigger size, smaller size like that. Some other questions also there from the other trends like what is ionization enthalpy, what is electron gain enthalpy, what is electropositivity, what is electronegativity, what is valency, right, oxidation state. These all are the trends in the periodic table is very important one. And then or some other concepts like what is diagonal relationship, which all elements are there, right, what are F-block element, lanthanide, actinide, you know, these are the basic part of the classification of element chapter in a simple chapter. But but here in this session, in this video, we are going to discuss the most important and most repeated type of question. So let us discuss the theory also in between. So let us start from the question from the simplest question that you know. State Mendeley's periodic law, state modern periodic law. As a statement question you can expect. You know, the uh, Mendeley's periodic law states that the properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic mass. If the property of the elements are the periodic functions of their atomic number, then it is called modern periodic table. You know, uh, Mendeley's arranged the elements in increasing order of atomic mass, whereas modern periodic table arranged in the increasing order of atomic number. So when you arrange the elements either in increasing order of atomic mass or increasing order of atomic number, after a particular time interval, they shows a similarity in property that is called Mendeley's law and modern law. So what is Mendeley's periodic law once again dear all just to try to recollect in your mind that is the uh, properties, which properties dear all especially the physical and chemical property, okay. The properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic mass, then it is called uh, uh, the Mendeley's periodic, um, periodic law. If it is uh, with atomic number, then what we can call it's a modern periodic law. So the statement as a one mark question, we can expect it. Then Next question, isotope. You may study what do you mean by isotope, isobar and isotone in this chapter, right? What do you mean by isotope, dear all? Isotope means uh, species having same atomic number but different mass number, right? Isotope, you know, isotope is there, isobar is there and isotone is there, right? Isotone is there. If you consider isotope, uh, isotope means, you know, same atomic number but different uh, mass number, right? Atomic number expressed by Z, mass number expressed by A. If the species having same atomic number but different mass number, that is called isotope. Isobar is just opposite. They have same mass number but different atomic number, but different atomic number. Then what do you mean by isotone? Isotone, same number of neutron. Same number of neutron but different number of proton, okay? Isotone means same number of neutron but but different number of, but different number of proton. That is called what? Isotone. So isotope, isobar, isotone, that's a question we can expect. So what is the, it's an MCQ question. Isotopes are, can you give any uh, correct answer for this one? You know, iso actually isotopes are same atomic number, different mass number, okay? So what is the answer? Let's go with the option A, atoms of an element with uh, similar properties but different atomic mass. 
See, their atomic numbers are same, but ato uh, atomic number is same, mass number is different. So, they have a similar chemical property, but different atomic mass. That is the one matching with the isotop. Okay, isotop, isobar, isoton, what it is, an example also we have to study. Next one, how many metals are present in the second period of periodic table? You know the periodic table, the, let me write the first two periods once again. You know where is hydrogen located? Hydrogen is left and helium on right. After hydrogen and helium, we have lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. You know that this is the first period elements, right? This is the first period and this is the second period elements, right? This is first period element. This is second period element. Question, in second period elements, right? In second period, uh, how many metals are present? You know very well where metals are located in the periodic table. Left side. So, no, the left side you have metals. So, which are the metals in second period? Lithium and beryllium. So, the answer is two. There are two metal in the uh, periodic table in second period elements. Okay, how many metals are present in second period? That is two, lithium and beryllium. Next question. On the basis of electronic configuration, you have a uh, element, you know the, uh, the element representation X uh, uh, with a 5, 9. You know what is this number represent? This re number represent atomic number. This number represent atomic number and the upper one represent what? Mass number. Okay. Atomic number and mass number. Next. On the basis of electronic configuration, the group number and period of the element X is. Let's find out what is the group and the period. Okay. What is atomic number 5? Atomic number is enough. Atom, if you know the atomic number, we can predict the block, period, group, everything. Here the atomic number is 5. Atomic number 5 means what is the configuration here all? 1s2, 2s2, 2p1 is the general electronic configuration, subshell configuration, right? So, let's find out the uh, entire idea about this one. What is the block? What is the group? And what is the period, okay? What is the period? Careful listen all. There are block, how we can find out, you know, S block, P block, D block, F block is there. Where the last electron entered, can you say, the last electron entered into P orbital, therefore it is P block element. If the last electron entered into S orbital, it's S block element. If the last electron entered into D orbital, it's D, D block element, like that, okay. So, block is easy to find where the last electron entered, that's it, clear all. Next, what is period? Period means the highest principal content number. Which is the principal content number in this configuration? This digit, right? 1, 2, 2. This digit, this, this number is the principal content number. So, here which is the highest principal content number? 1, 2, 2. 2 is the highest. So, it belongs to second period. And how we can find the group number? Group number, only the difference, okay? Carefully notice. You already find its P block, right? P block, right? P block. P block, what is the outermost number of electron? 1, right? 1 plus 12. So, how you can find the group number of a P block element? Add 12 with the outermost electron. Why we are adding 12? You know, P block is starting from 13 onwards. So, behind 13, there are 12 groups, as or no. Right. So, 1 plus 12, it belongs to 13th group. So, what is the answer here all? Group 13 and second period. Group 13 and period number 2. Clear. So, once again, how we find the block of an element where last electron entered. How we find the period of an element which is the highest principal content number. How you find the group of P block element add 12 with the outermost electron. Hope it's clear dear all. Okay, let's go. Next one. An element X with the atomic number 11. So, element X with atomic number 11. Uh, forms a compound with element Y. Okay, uh, Y is an another element with atomic number 8. What is the formula of the compound form? A simple question. Let's answer here all carefully listen. You know, atomic number 11 means we can able to say, either you can write take shell configuration or normal, the subshell. The 11, conf 11 is the atomic number, so we can write 281. If it is 8, we can write 2,6. You know, this uh, this element 
if it lose this one electron it's it's octet completed so it will try to it is ready to lose one electron so we can say x charge is plus one why plus one because it is ready to lose that one electron to a complete octet but what about why why either it can lose the six electron or it can gain two electron to complete octet which is best to gain two electron so it's gaining means you know it will get negative charge so y charge is what two minus so y x charge plus one because it's ready to lose one electron y y charge is minus two it's ready to gain one electron correct so what is the formula of this complex you know how to make the formula one keep it here two keep it here the formula will be x to y right it will be x to y option b okay so just to take its oxidation state valency properly valency we can get very clear how much electron is losing or how much electron is gaining that's it okay so losing mean positive charge gaining mean negative charge and then just cross and give it to them clear next one define electro positivity and define electro negativity there are electro positivity is also called the word you know metallic character metallic character whereas electro negativity is also called the word non metallic character non metallic character keep in mind what do you mean by electro positive positive you know by the loss of gain of electron a atom can uh, get uh, positive charge definitely by losing electron right yes so electro positivity means it's a ability of an atom to lose ability of an atom to lose electron and become as a positive charge or cation this is called what metallic character or uh, electro positive character so it is the measure of the ability of an element to donate uh, electrons to form a positive ion for example if an element x is there if it lose one electron what it become x plus right if the element is x if it lose one electron it become what x plus like that, that ability is called the word metallic character. If they are more ready to, easily ready to donate an electron mean, they are more metallic, that's the meaning. What do you mean by electronegativity? It is the ability of an element to accept a shared pair of electron from a covalently bonded atom. For example, if I am taking a species CH3Br, you know this bond is actually connected to carbon and bromine. Carbon and bromine, which is most electronegative element bromine you know there are electronegative elements are located right side of the periodic table electro positive elements are located left side of the periodic table or metals are located left side non metals are located right side that you know so uh, carbon and bromine you know bromine is the most right one so it is most uh, uh, which one electronegative so it will take electron faster so this is a two electron to electron covalently so these two electron both of them go toward bromine why because bromine is most electronegative so what do you mean by electronegative it's a ability of an element to attract a shared pair of electrons right shared pair of electron from a covalently bonded at uh, co covalently bonded this is called what electronegativity so simply we can say electro positivity is also called metallic character where electrons the ability to lose whereas electronegativity is also called a non metallic character where electrons are gaining a shared pair of electron from a covalent bond is taken by the element that's called the more electronegative so electro positive mean giving electron negativity means taking clear all okay next one study the exact definition next one atomic radii you know that how atomic radii means atomic size how it is varying down the group and across a period they are all atomic uh, size atomic size you know that down the group down the group you know number of shells are increasing right when you coming down the group number of shells are increasing atomic size increases across a period across a period what is happening from left to right number of shells are not changing number of shells are not changing but nuclear attraction increases therefore atomic size decreases so generally 
Atomic size down the group increases because number of shells are increasing. Across a period, it decreases because nuclear charge is increasing. Now, question, group 1 elements are given here. You know group 1 elements which are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, like that. So, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, they are in first group. Yes, you can able to see atomic size is increasing. 86 picometer to see keep on increasing right so state the reason behind the observed trend in the above element what is the trend group 1 elements are given in the question down the group atomic size increases because number of shells are increasing nuclear charge is decreasing so therefore atomic size increases down the group therefore the value from sodium to cesium is keep increasing right next question an element X is forming an acidic oxide. Its position in modern periodic table will be. There are, there are different type of oxides. They are acidic oxide, basic oxide, neutral oxide, and then some amphoteric oxides. Amphoteric oxide. These are the different type of oxides we have. Then acidic oxides are formed by non-metals. Acidic oxides are formed by non-metals, whereas basic oxides are formed by metals. And there is certain other cases, neutral oxides and amphoteric oxide, we will discuss later. So here the point, acidic oxides are formed by non-metal, basic oxides are formed by metals. Okay. So the question which is uh, an acidic oxide, acidic oxide means it should be a non-metal, right? It should be non-metal. So which is the most non-metallic element that is a question. So dear all. Uh, let me cut group 1 because group 1 elements you know they are metals you know group 1 and group 2 elements are metal so A and B let's cut group 13 group 16 period is same so doesn't matter group 13 group 16 the which is the one very close to the right side group 13 group 16 you know 13 to 16 means you are going through across a period across a period non-metallic character increases so which is the most non-metallic one group 16th element okay so most non-metallic mean it will be an acidic oxide okay next question out of the three elements p q are having atomic number p atomic number is given 11 q atomic number is given 17 and uh, r atomic number is given 19 respectively question which two elements will show similar properties and why let me write this configuration it's it's like a 281 or let me write the subshell configuration that is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 17 means 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p5 here it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s1 they are all which of them shows similar similar properties and why very simple see the last orbital this is 3s this is 3p this is 4s this is S, S. Those, you know, uh, the, were the last electron entered into S subshell. So, they are S block element. So, both P and Q, uh, R, both P and R are S block elements. So, their properties are same. They are metals, their characteristics will be or chemical, the properties will be almost similar. This, what, what about this one? So, this is S block element, this is S block element, what about this? This is P block element. So, you know S block elements are metal, their properties are almost the same type. So, P and R are uh, having same property because they are belongs to S block element and they are in group 1 because see that is a 1 electron in their outermost shell. They are group 1 element, you know group 1 elements mean those elements which are lying in the same group having same valency. Those elements which are lying in the same group, they are having same valency. So, how they can complete their octet by losing this one electron. So, it charges plus one, it charges also what plus one. See, their chemical properties are same because their valencies are same, they are in the same group. Okay, next one. 
Who was the first scientist to classify elements according to their property? As I told you, the Dobereiner's triad is the first invention. You know, Dobereiner's triad also arranged the elements in increasing order of atomic mass. And what he found that he made the existing group into three set, right? Each set he called it as what? A triad. The first triad is lithium, sodium, potassium. Second one, calcium, strontium, barium. Next one, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You know what is the speciality of each triad? triad the first and last the first and third element if you take the first and third element atomic mass average you will get the atomic mass of the middle one right that is already show here that you already used to learn in the 10th grade so Doberinus triad Newland's law of octave were the merits and demerits they are all just uh, concentrate but it's a less uh, area less important area majority question from the trends you can expect okay anyway should not leave it study this okay next one Give the general characteristics of the long form of the periodic table. What do you mean by long form of the periodic table? That is our modern, the latest periodic table. What are the characteristics? Answer is already given. You know, in our modern periodic table, uh, metals are located left side, non-metals are located right side. Correct? And there are 118 elements. And then there are 18 groups are there. 18 vertical columns are there. They are called a group. And 7 horizontal rows are there. That is called a period. Then so 18 vertical groups, uh, call, uh, groups are there. Their groups number you know 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 18 is given. 7 horizontal rows are there. They are called a periods. And the elements present in groups 1, 2 and 13 to 17 are called a main group element or representative element. <coughs> That you please uh, keep in mind here all. S block element. What is group 1 and 2? That is S block element. What is group 13 to 17? That is P block element. S block elements and P block elements. Okay. S block element and P block elements. They are the main, blo main block. See S block left, P block right, middle we have D and down F. So S and P is the main building, main, main block of the periodic table. They are called the main group element and representative element. Okay. S block block and p block element and the element present between 3 to 12 are called what transition elements you know that is called our d block elements so these are the main characteristics of which one the modern periodic table then why do lithium and magnesium show resemble in property those who are watching the video they can immediately get the answer that is due to diagonal relationship yes or no yes dear all diagonal relationship this is because of diagonal relationship. What do you mean by diagonal relationship? In the latest modern periodic table, the second and third period elements in which one? Second and third period element, the diagonally placed element show similarity in property that is called what? Diagonal relationship. What is that once again? Diagonal relationship mean in second and third period, diagonally placed element shows similarity in property. For example, lithium with magnesium, beryllium with aluminium, boron with silicon like that. So diagonally placed element shows similarity in property in second and third period element that is called what? Diagonal relationship. So lithium and magnesium show similarity in property due to diagonal relationship. Okay, clear all. Next, the atomic radius of elements decreases along the period but neon has the highest size among third period elements and why they're all you know the ne uh, neon right the, especially the second period element second period why neon you know where is neon located in the right side right neon is located on the right side as a noble gas you know that left to right when you're moving atomic size decreases due to effective nuclear charge correct but still so we are expecting uh, lithium to while you're moving to neon neon should be the least size because it is located on the right side but why neon having bigger size that is due to the weak van der Waal force in neon the noble gases you know noble gases are connected through very weak van der Waal force so why neon van der Waal force mean atomic radius is little big because it's a weak bond okay so keep in mind noble gases having comparatively little bigger size because 
in a in across a period noble gases why it shows little bigger size even though they are present on the right side of the periodic table mean they having von Raval force it's a weak attractive force the the atomic size is little bigger because of the weak attractive force okay so the reason von Raval force next one define valency you can also call it as oxidation state define valency it is the combining capacity of an element for example if you consider sodium sodium atomic number 11 configuration is 281 oxygen atomic number is 6 uh, it's uh, sorry the an atomic number 8 so the uh, configuration we can write 2 comma 6 so as per sodium how it can complete octet by losing this one electron Sodium will ready to lose one electron. So, sodium charge we call it as plus one. So, that is the uh, valency or oxidation state of sodium. What about oxygen? It need two more electron. So, it will gain two electron. So, it charges minus two. Yes or no? So, that is the valency of oxygen. So, it is the combining capacity of an element. Maybe it will lose electron. Maybe it will gain electron. Everything is doing for what purpose? To attain their octet completion making stability. So, if sodium lose one electron means yes, it's valence is 1. If oxygen get, gaining 2 electron means yes its valence is 2 like that. Okay next one. How does valency vary in a group and period in the periodic table? Let's see. Dear all valency means as I told you oxidation state. First you consider about group. For example let me take the first group okay lithium, sodium, potassium. Lithium you know configuration we can write 2 1. Sodium configuration we can write 281. Potassium we will write 2881. So dear all, carefully. See, have you noticed those elements which are located in the same group having same number of valence electron, how they are going to complete their octet just by losing. So what we can say, all of them shows which state plus one state. So we can able to confirm. Those elements which are lying in the same group having same valency, same oxidation state. What about a period? Across a period, you consider any one of the period here all. Any one of the period you consider. For example, second period you consider. You can able to notice that first it will increase, then it will decrease. First it increase, then it will decrease. This is the trend in the across a period how valencies are changing. So conclusion, down the group valency remains same. So those elements which are located in the same group having same valency across a period valency first it increase then it uh, decrease. Clear all? Okay, next one. What is the valency of noble gases? What is the valency of noble gases? They are all valency of noble gases what we can write zero. Yes or no? Zero. Why it is zero? Because noble gases, they already completed their octet, right? For example, neon, its configuration is 2, 8. They already completed their octet. So, they are not ready to lose electron or gain electron. So, what we can say, their valency is what? Zero. Alright, next one. What is amphoteric oxide? I told you that oxides are of different type. Uh, which one? Metallic oxide. That's a... Uh, uh, acidic oxides are there, basic oxides are there, neutral oxides are there, amphoteric oxides are there. What is amphoteric oxide? You know what is meant by the term amphoteric? They can act as what both strong, uh, both acid and base or they can react with what acid or base. See oxides that can behave as acid as well as base are known as what amphoteric oxide. Just keep two example in your mind lead oxide, aluminium oxide. Lead oxide, aluminium oxide are amphoteric oxide because they can behave as acidic and basic. Okay. Next one. What is the general outer electronic configuration of F block element? You may study the general electronic configuration of S, P, D and F block element. There are S block element, general electronic configuration, you know, N, S, 1 to 2. And P block element, general configuration, N, S, 2, N, P, 1 to 6. And D block element general configuration N minus 1 D 1 to 10 and N S 1 to 2. 
and uh, f block element general configuration n minus 2 f 1 to 14 n minus 1 d 0 to 1 and n s 2 hope you already studied that so any one of the general electronic configuration definitely they can ask you as a question so compulsory to know s block p block d block and f block their general electronic configuration all right now how why do sodium and potassium have similar properties because they are located in the same group you know first group element lithium sodium potassium like that so you know sodium and potassium are located in same group in same group those elements which are in same group you know their valencies are same valency are same valency same means their almost chemical properties are same you know first group element i told you they all their charge is plus one sodium plus one potassium plus one why because why they losing that one electron they attaining their stability right so all those elements which are lying in the same group their valencies are same if valencies are same their chemical properties are almost similar next arrange the following elements in the increasing order of metallic character you can able to notice that the elements are given silicon beryllium magnesium sodium and potassium let us arrange the elements dear all let me write the periodic table hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon then we have sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon right first 18 elements we placed let me locate where is silicon here where is beryllium okay magnesium then uh, sodium then phosphorus okay question what arrange the following in increasing order of metallic character you know how metallic character how it's varying right across a period it decreases down the group it increases yes okay let us start so can you tell me which is the most metallic one left side most down which one sodium is the most metallic one after sodium which is that magnesium after that beryllium why dear all because down the group metallic character increases across a period it decreases so sodium magnesium beryllium next whether silicon or phosphorus is more metallic silicon because across a period metallic character decreases so silicon and least one phosphorus so whenever you studying a trend in the periodic table it is compulsory to know what is the trend and how it is varying down the group and across a period clear all hope you get that next one name the two elements whose existence and properties were predicted by Mendeley though they did not exist then you know you may study it Mendeley's before their discovery he predicted that some properties and he gave a space also for that one he named as Eka aluminium right what is that they are gallium and germanium Yes or no? No, gallium and germanium. He uh, name he predicted before the discovery of the element. You know the Eka. He given the name like that. Next one. Uh, what would be the IUPAC name? You know more than 100. More than 100 many of the elements were not discovered at the time. So they given a particular name, particular naming system. More than 100 elements. So you know that zero, nil, un, bi, tri, quad, pend, hex, sept, oct, n. So 120 is the atomic number. How to write its name? 1, 1 stands for what? Un plus 2 stands for by and 0 stands for what? Nil. Right? Un by nil after adding add I U M with that. So what is the name? Un by nilium. Un by nilium. What is the symbol of this element? First letter you take. Un. First digit. First letter. Un. U. By. Second digit. B. Next number. Nil. So that is U B N. Un by nilium. U B N. That is a symbol. Right. So like that you may study. Let me give you one more example. What is the name you can suggest for 117? The atomic number. 1. Which one? Un. Again, 1, un, 7, sept, and plus I, U, M. So, what is the name of the compound? Un, un, septium. Un, un, septium. What is the symbol you can suggest? Un, un, septium. U, U, S. Clear all? Okay. Next one. Give the main features of S block element. 
they ask you any one block element during exam s block p block d block f block so what is the main uh, features of s block let's see those elements whose last electron you know s block elements were last electron are entered into s subshell then we are the group 1 and group 2 elements are called s block element and their general electronic configuration we already discussed it is ns1 to 2 they are generally metals right it says at least two three general characteristics of the species we should know it next one write the general features of p block element p block elements you know the last electron which is entered into p orbital or p subshell and they are belongs to group number 13 to 18 this is our p block area group number 13 to 18 is p block and the general electronic configuration we said already ns2 np126 and they contain you know this is the p block par they contain metals they contain non metal and they contain metalloid you know this yellow colored one are the metalloid which all boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony tellurium statin these are the uh, metalloids so they contain metal non metal metalloid etc but what about our s block element they are generally metals what about d block element general feature of d block elements those elements were the last electron enter into d subshell then uh, they are starting from where 3 to 12 you know 1 to 2 s block 13 to 18 uh, p block middle 2 to 12 is which one d block and uh, their general electronic configuration we discussed before and they are also what generally metal you can give some addition point for d block fifth one they used as catalyst they used as what catalyst you know nickel platinum palladium they used as catalyst sixth one they shows colors they shows colored the d block element generally they are colored you know copper blue color like that so they are colored complexes also they can form it what is the general features of f block element where the last electron enter into f subshell is called f block element you know they are two type lanthanoids and actinoids correct and the elements of f block elements are present below the periodic table why they placed below the periodic table in order to not to disturb the periodic table complete structure all right and general electronic configuration dear all it's an expected question and they contain lanthanoids and actinoid there are 14 lanthanoid 14 actinoid total 14 plus 14 28 f block elements are there okay explain why cations are smaller and uh, anions are larger dear all cation how what do you mean by cation when an element lose electron it get positive charge then it is called a cation for example let me take a uh, sodium uh, explain why cations are smaller and anions are larger in radii uh, than their parent atom okay the sodium uh, atomic number you know 2 comma 8 comma uh, 1 so sodium uh, when it lose one electron what it become 2 8 yes or no now it is sodium plus so now it's become a cation so why cations are smaller so when they losing electron when they losing electron so for example initially i will give you i will give please wait all of you one another question i will discuss this one detail now you see when an element lose electron maybe shell number decreases and also their nuclear charge see initially suppose there is five proton and five electron you know proton right the positive the positive one and the nucleus is there and electron is outside negative charge electron is there five proton five electron so right they will bond it okay when one of the electron lose so what is left five proton four electron so the remaining electron is strongly attracted by the proton again one electron lose so five proton three electron then attraction will be increases so when electron loses the remaining electron get attracted by the nucleus tightly so what happen as the as they losing electron maybe their shell number decreases or their nuclear charge increases so their size decreases okay what about anion anions are gaining electron so they maybe their shell number increases so the size of the atom increases okay so general trend we can able to say anions are bigger always anions are bigger than the parent atom parent atom in the sense the neutral one and cations are always smaller so the size of the ions keep in mind all of you anions are bigger than parent atom than cation we'll give you more example let's see next question define ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy what do you mean by ionization enthalpy 
it is the amount of energy it is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell it is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom is called ionization enthalpy. So, if the electro outermost electron is tightly holded with the nucleus mean, it is very harder to remove electron. Okay. So, ionization enthalpy more required. So, ionization enthalpy mean it is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom. What about electron? gain enthalpy it is the here we are going to add one electron here we are losing here we are adding so what is electron gain enthalpy please note one more point electron gain enthalpy is also known as electron affinity electron affinity what is mean by electron gain enthalpy it is the amount of energy released it is the amount of energy released from an isolated gaseous atom when an electron added to the outermost shell. Read it. The change in enthalpy accompanying during the process is defined in which an electron is gained by any neutral gaseous atom and it converts that atom into a negative ion. So, here it is losing and here it is what gaining. Okay. So, conclusion. The amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom is known as what? Ionization enthalpy and the amount of energy released when an electron added to the outermost shell where when it gained then the amount of energy released from that atom is called what? Electron gain enthalpy or electron affinity. Okay, next one. Write the difference between electron negativity and electron gain enthalpy. What is the difference between electron negativity and electron gain enthalpy? Both are different here. All. Definition already we discussed for both in the previous slide. What is electron negativity? It is the ability of an element to attract a shared pair of electron from a covalent bond. What do you mean by electron gain enthalpy? It is the amount of energy released when an electron added to the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom. So, first difference their definition. Second one. Uh, electron gain enthalpy is the property of an isolated atom, a, a, a individual atom. Whereas electron negativity is a property of a bonded atom. We told you know from covalent bond whether it is able to take electron or not. So, this is electron gain enthalpy is a property of an isolated species, isolated atom. Whereas electron negativity for a bonded atom. Now, it is the... Uh, uh, attracting tendency of an atom it is a relative attracting tendency uh, it's a it is a relative electron attracting tendency of an atom so there is a small difference between them just uh, the last point please careful electron gain enthalpy what do you mean by enthalpy energy its unit is kilojoule per mole or electron volt so generally electron gain enthalpy having a unit kilojoule per mole but electronegativity is just an ability it's having no unit. So basically I think better to study these three points for your examination. So they ask you write the difference between electronegativity and electron gain enthalpy. Next one how does metallic character change in a group you know metallic character metallic character what is mean by metallic character electro positive character mean ability to lose electron they are all metallic character you know down the group atomic size increases down the group atomic size increases atomic size increases mean the nuclear charge decreases you can easily remove this electron so metallic character increases because metallic character is the ability to lose electron so down the group atomic size increases easy weak, easy to remove electron so metallic character increases whereas non uh, what about metallic character across a period across a period atomic size decreases so nuclear charge is very strong harder to remove electron so metallic character decreases conclusion metallic character down the group increase across a period decrease opposite for non-metallic character across a period it increase down the group it decrease okay keep in mind next question among the element boron aluminium carbon and silicon which has the highest first ionization enthalpy what do you mean by first ionization enthalpy amount of energy required to remove one electron from its outermost shell let me uh, place the species dear all uh, this uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, 
boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. Then we have sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon. These are the elements we have. See, uh, which all are the elements given? Boron, aluminium, carbon and silicon. See the uh, location of the element first. You know, this is down the groove. This is across a period. Which has the highest first ionization enthalpy where it is harder to remove one electron? The ionization enthalpy is very close relation to atomic size. Ionization enthalpy is inversely proportional to atomic size. We already said as atomic size increases, it's very easy to remove electron. So less energy is enough to remove one electron. So less ionization. Okay. So can you able to say highest first ionization enthalpy mean which is smaller in size? Which is smaller in size, you know, across a period size decreases, size decreases, down the group size increases. So what is that? Carbon, right? Carbon is the smallest element. So it's at uh, ionization enthalpy is very high, very harder to remove electron. Which has the largest atomic size? Tell me, they're all down the group size increases, right? Of course, aluminium or silicon. And across a period size decreases. So which one? Aluminium. Okay. So what are the point here all? Down the group atomic size increase. As atomic size increases, ionization enthalpy decrease. So carbon is the smallest size here. So it's having high ionization enthalpy. Now, why Na plus has high value of ionization enthalpy than neon? Though both of them having same electronic configuration. Yes. You know, sodium. Atomic number 11, its configuration is 2,8,1. Sodium plus mean it become a cation, it lose this electron, now the configuration is 2,8. Yeah, and what about neon? Neon is atomic number uh, 10, its configuration is 2,8. Yes, sodium plus and neon having same configuration, but still why sodium plus having high ionization enthalpy means from which removal of electron is harder. If you want to remove electron from sodium plus, we have to give more energy. Why? Can you say dear all what is answer? Sodium, this point I already told you, sodium contain 10 electron and 11 proton. Sodium initially, sorry, the beginning beginning sodium contain 11 electron and 11 proton what happen when sodium become sodium plus it lose one electron right so remaining 10 electron and 11 proton yes what about neon neon contain 10 proton and 10 electron have you noticed the difference here 11 proton 10 electron see their attraction will be more positive and negative attraction will be more as the number of electron reduces the remaining electron is strongly bonded with the nucleus what about here for 10 proton 10 electron is there so what is the reason dear all when sodium converted to sodium plus one electron loss so proton number same 11 electron number become 10 11 proton attract 10 electron here 10 proton attracted 10 electron very strong here therefore size is small clear next the atomic number of an element is 16. Determine its position according to its configuration. Position in the sense, find the block, period and groove. Atomic number 16 means configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4 is the configuration. Can you predict the block, the period and group? They are all, can you tell me fast? What is the block? Come on, come on. What is the block? Where the last electron ended? P. Therefore, it is P block. How we find the period? The largest principal quantum number, it is 3, third period. How we find the group of a P block element? What we said? Add 12 with the outermost electron. That is 16th group. Okay. So, I, I think the, uh, let me tell you, block calculation, hope it's clear, where last electron entered. Period number, the highest principal quantum number from the configuration. That also you will get it. Group only different. Keep in mind. S block element. You know, S block element, beginning group. First group and second group. How many electron in their outermost shell? That is the group. Nothing to add. P block element, we have to add 12. Why? Because behind P block, there is 12 groups other. So, add 12 with the outermost electron. 
how you find the group of d block element you know d block element is starting from 3 onwards right 3 to 12 so behind 3 there are two groups so add 2 with the outermost electron okay and f block elements all are in the third all are considered as in the third group all are in the third group okay next consider the following isoelectronic species what do you mean by isoelectronic species they contain same number of electrons see dear all sodium plus you know sodium contain 11 11 electron sodium plus mean one gone 10 electron mg magnesium contain 12 electron 2 plus gone mean see 10 electron these all having same electron but they want to arrange in the increasing order of their radius size we already discussed that anions are bigger anions are bigger then we have parent element parent atom means neutral atom then we have which one cation okay so can you tell me which all are anion among this one this is cation this is cation this is anion and it is anion which all are anion f minus and o2 minus they are bigger in size among f minus and o2 minus which is bigger in size they are all o2 minus greater the charge of anion greater the size so o2 minus is bigger than f minus okay and among na plus and mg2 plus which is bigger in size na plus than mg2 plus let me conclude dear all listen generally anions are bigger than cation okay next greater the charge on anion greater the size greater the charge on cation smaller the size perfect next so what is the answer here o2 minus f minus na plus mg2 plus right three second one which among the following is not an actinoid they're all f block elements f block elements we classify into two set you know that which all are that lanthanoids and actinoids lanthanoids and actinoid you know lanthanoids are starting after lanthanum Lanthanum atomic number 57, actinoids are starting after actinium 89. Okay, so lanthanoids are after lanthanum, 14 elements are arranged in a separate row called a lanthanoid. After actinium, 14 elements are arranged in a separate row is called a actinoid. Okay, so lanthanoids are represented by lanthanoids are. Uh, starting from 58 to 71 and actinoids are starting from 90 to 103 90 to 103 lanthanoids starting from 58 to 71 actinoids starting from 90 to 103 okay so which of among the following is not an actinoid is the question which is not an actinoid actinoid is ranging from 58 to uh, sorry actinoid ranging from 90 to 103 which is not terbium it is 65 right 65 should come this area clear all next one the order of screening effect of the electron you know screening effect this is nucleus this is s orbital this is p orbital this is d orbital this is f orbital and electrons are there right electrons are there see carefully listen all uh, what do you mean by screening effect screening effect mean the inner orbital which all are inner orbital s p r the inner orbital electron shielding the charge of nucleus therefore outer electron get less attraction is called what screening effect what inner orbitals shielding the charge of nucleus therefore nucleus getting less attraction to the outermost electron is called the screening effect or shielding effect they are asking what is the power of screening effect which will make more screening s because they are very close to nucleus right so s greater than p greater than d greater than f this is the order so spdf is the order of screening effect okay s is the one very close to nucleus so they will shield the charge of nucleus highly then the electronic configuration of the given gadolinium is dear all please listen lanthanoid and actinoid how to write their uh, electronic configuration first it's a very simple method is there lanthanoid mean take xenon actinoid mean take radon noble gas remember xenon atomic number 54 radon atomic number 86 xenon atomic number 54 radon atomic number 86 after xenon the orbitals are 
4f 5d 6s and after red on they are 5f 6d 7s please remember this one okay now let me tell you how the electrons are filling up after 54 dear all please apply this method okay after 54 next two electron goes to 6s then one electron goes to 5d then 14 electron goes to 4f this is the way of filling of electron you know d orbital maximum capacity 10 right so after filling 14 here then only you can go to fill to 5d up to 10 so once again after 54 next two electron fill in 6s then one electron in 5d then 14 electron in 4f same way in actinoid after 86 next two electron in 7s then one electron in 6d then 14 electron in 5f if you have some more electron to fill come back to 6d up to 10 you fill let me tell you with uh, this example gadolinium right gadolinium atomic number 64 so which which one you select for that one whether xenon or radon configuration of course this is uh, eight more than 86 right we need only 64 so take this one so let me write xenon xenon then we have 4f 5d and 6s here 54 over already 54 completed to 64 we have 10 more electron how to fill 10 more electron after 54 two here one here remaining seven here this is the way we can fill where you can able to see dear all xenon 4f7 5d1 6s2 that is third one all right next the statement which is not correct following periodic classification of element is the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic number. Yes. The non-metallic elements are less in number than metallic element. Do you agree with that? Dear all, you know, in the modern periodic table, metals, S block, D block, these all are metal. Only P block area for some non-metals are there. Yes, it's correct. Third one, for the given transition element, you know, transition elements mean our D block element, the 3D orbital fill uh, with the electron after 3p orbital and before the 4s orbital that is wrong right you know the orbital is uh, arrangement 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 after 3p we will fill in what 4s2 then only it will go to 3d because you know off bow principle has to follow they said for the given transition element 3d orbitals fill with the electrons after the 3p orbital and before the 4s orbital right no so uh, after 3p after the 3p orbital and before the 4s orbital no 3d orbital is what after 4s only after 4s only d orbital can fill according to what rule of bow rules now among halogens what is the correct order of their uh, energy released in the given electron uh, gain enthalpy they are asking you what is the order of electron gain enthalpy of halogen let me just correct here this is option 2 this is option 3 this is option 4 okay the halogens you know fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine correct all of you just keep in mind keep in mind they are asking you you know fluorine chlorine bromine are iodine are the halogen they are in the same group right they are asking what is the order of their electron gain enthalpy this is a one exception question carefully dear all down the group the order of uh, uh, their electron gain enthalpy is chlorine and fluorine just switch it all chlorine and fluorine just switch it remaining all same so chlorine come first so chlorine the greatest one then fluorine then bromine then iodine this is the order of electron gain enthalpy of halogen why chlorine and fluorine are switching there is a reason they're all fluorine is a smaller element among these uh, four elements, fluorine is smaller element. You know, fluorine atomic number uh, 9, 2,7. So, nucleus is there. Outermost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. See, all electrons are very close. All electrons are very close. All electrons are very close means what happened? Electron-electron repulsion is very high. So, in fluorine, because of small size, the all electrons are very close, were high electron-electron repulsion. 
So what happens if there is a high electron electron repulsion? It is very difficult to add one more electron. What we are doing in electron gain enthalpy? We are going to add one more electron. So it is very difficult. Already fluorine is under electron electron repulsion. Adding of one more electron is harder. Yes or no? So we can able to say that chlorine should come first, then fluorine down. So where you can able to see this order in the option? They are all the option. Let's go with the third one. See, fluorine, it is less than chlorine. Yes, fluorine less than chlorine. Chlorine is greater than fluorine. Yes, and chlorine is greater than bromine. Yes, this is the order. Okay, this is given in another format. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay, so study why fluorine electron gain enthalpy lesser than chlorine because of this reason. Okay. Now the period number at the long form of the, you know how you are finding the period of an element from the electronic configuration, you are checking the largest principal content number, right? So what is that? Uh, we can able to say the period number is uh, determined by the maximum principal content number of any given period element. Max, the highest principal content number by seeing that we are judging the period of the element, right? The element in which the given electrons progressively fill in the 4f orbital call. I already told you in one another case in lanthanoid and actinoid. In lanthanoid, you are using which one? Where the last electron is entering 4f. So 4f series are lanthanoid. In actinoid, the last electrons are entering into 5f. So lanthanoids are 4f series, actinoids are 5f series. Keep in mind. So this question, uh, the element which is belongs to 4f orbital, which is that lanthanoids. Then, which among the following is the correct size? Already discussed, you know, anions are bigger than parent atom, then cation. So, what is the, where is anion? This is anion, parent atom, cation, right. Then, electronic configuration of the following four elements are given here. Which among the following is the correct order of their increasing the tendency to gain the electron? What is the tendency to gain electron is called electronegativity. They are asking which is more electronegative, more ready to accept electron. Let's see. A, not at all ready to accept electron because it's a noble gas. Their outermost shell is completely, outermost subshell is filled, completely filled, right? No, they don't, they don't want electron. What about B? Yes, it's a P orbital. It's a P block element. You know, P block elements are non-metal. Non-metals are electronegative. Yes, it needs two more electrons to complete octet. What about this one? It, you know, it's not ready to lose electron because it is S block. S block is metal. They are ready to lose. See, this is ready to lose this electron. What about D? D is highly ready to attract one electron because if it get one more electron here, it can complete octet. So, can you tell me A and C are very less reactive but b and d are more ready to accept electron among b and d which is more ready to accept electron that is d that is d so d is the most one than b and can you tell me among c and a you know a is a noble gas noble gas not at all ready to accept electron in normal cases so c and a we can possess so a c b d a c b d yes option one Explain why the electron gain enthalpy of the elemental fluorine is less negative than that of element chlorine. That I already discussed. Uh, fluorine is a smaller element. Sm because of small size, this electron-electron repulsion is very high. So addition of one more electron is what? Harder in benzene. So because of the repulsion. So uh, fluorine electron gain enthalpy is less negative. Whereas chlorine is more negative. Okay, then all the transition elements are D block element, but all the D block elements are not transition element. Let me explain with an example. You consider the element uh, scandium and uh, zinc. Okay, consider the element scandium and zinc. Scandium atomic number 21, zinc atomic number is 30. Let me write the configuration of scandium that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 4s2 and 3d1 and 30 atomic number we can write 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d10 they are all carefully listen in scandium let me write the last 3d orbital you know d orbital you know 5 5 are there how many electron only one electron what about here 3d 3d means uh, 10 electron right 1 2 3 4 5 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright. 
What do you mean by a D block element? A D block element means, okay, a D block element. When it becomes a D block element, the last electron or the valence electron entered, entered to D subshell. Have you check it? Dear all, please check it all of you. See this first example where the last electron entered D subshell. Therefore, it is a D block element. Therefore, it is a D block element. What about zinc where the last electron entered? Yes, D. This is also D block element. But when it become a transition element, when it become a transition element, they should contain incompletely filled. If it want to be a transition element, there should be an incompletely filled, incompletely filled D orbital. Means D orbital should not be fully filled. See dear all here, D orbital is fully filled. Therefore, it is not a transition element. Not a transition element. But here you see D orbitals are free, incomplete. Therefore, it is called, it's a transition element. <laughs> So we can able to say all D block elements are not transition element, but the uh, all all uh, transition elements are D block element, but all D block elements are not transition element. Clear? See, these are D block element, but not transition. Uh, so the transition elements are what the D block element. Clear all of you. So if it want to be a D block, the last electron should enter into D subshell. If it want to be a transition element, it should contain incompletely filled the D orbital. If the first member of each group of the representative element S and P block element shows abnormal behavior, illustrate with the help of two examples. You know, the first member of each group, well, let me consider hydrogen, uh, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, right? And these groups is going on, right? If you consider first group, uh, dear all, hydrogen, we can cut it because hydrogen, you know, the position is not yet fixed, right? So hydrogen, let us uh, cut it. See the first group element basically starting from lithium. Second group starting from beryllium. Third group, the th 13th starting from boron like that. So generally second period elements are the starting of majority of the groups, right? They have some speciality compared to the other elements. If you consider lithium, with the other group elements, they ha lithium having some speciality. So let me take the element lithium beryllium as an example. What is their property? Dear all, they have small size. Yes or no? What is their anomalous property compared to the other elements in the group? First one we can say they're having small size. Yes, when compared to other group element, lithium is small size. Because lithium is top, down the group size increase, right? Because of small size, it's having high ionization enthalpy. Correct or not? Because of because of small size, their ionization enthalpy is very high. We have to give more energy to remove electron. What about third one? They have high electronegativity. High electronegativity. Smaller the size mean, smaller the size mean they are ready to what attract electron. They are high nuclear charge. So high electronegativity. And fourth one, absence of d orbital. Absence of d orbital. Generally. Those elements which are placed on top, they doesn't contain d orbital. So why? What is, what is the question actually here? In every group, the first element shows some sim, uh, speciality in property that is called what? That is called uh, the difference in their anomalous property. That is the anomalous special individual property. What are the property? They are comparatively smaller size, comparatively high ionization energy, high electronegativity, absence of d orbital compared to the other group elements. All right. How will you explain the first ionization enthalpy of sodium is squared lower than that of magnesium? Let's see. Sodium atomic number is 11 and magnesium atomic number is 12. So sodium configuration, I can write it as 2A to 1. Magnesium, I can write it as 2A to 2. If sodium lose, if you apply first ionization enthalpy, what do you mean by first ionization enthalpy? It is the amount of energy required to remove one electron. Okay, let me remove this one electron. What is left? 2 8. Let me remove this one electron. What is left? 2 8 to 1. If you apply second ionization enthalpy, if you apply second ionization enthalpy, what happened here all? What happened? It is lose this one more electron. It will be 2,7. It lose this one electron. It will be 2,8. Correct. Question, compare this one. 
do you think ie1 of sodium or ie1 of magnesium which is more energy required of course that is magnesium because sodium only one electron in their outermost shell so sodium already ready to lose that electron so less energy is enough so we can say ie1 of sodium is less than ie1 of what magnesium but after IE1, sodium gets stability, magnesium unstable. So ma here magnesium is ready to lose one electron. So this energy is lesser, where he, this energy is more. Why? Because it's already stable. So stable compound removal of electron, harder. So we can say IE, uh, IE2 of sodium is bigger than IE2 of what magnesium. Clear all? So, just uh, make, uh, the ionization enthalpy mainly depends on atomic size and uh, its uh, stability. Bigger the size, smaller the ionization enthalpy. Higher the stability, higher the hydration enthalpy, ionization enthalpy. Among alkali metals, which element can be least electronegative and uh, why? You know, electronegativity down the group decreases, right? So, which is the down element? Alkali metal. Alkali metal means first group. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. You know, francium we won't consider there. Cesium is the highest. Cesium, sorry. Cesium is the highest electronegative element. Cesium, the down element having least electronegativity, cesium is the high electro, least electronegative element in alkali metals. Arrange the following elements, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen and sulfur in the order of increasing first ionization enthalpy. You know, dear all, nitrogen, how they located here? Nitrogen, phosphorus is down the group. After nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur. So, this is across a period. This is down the group. This is the location of the element in the periodic table. Just check it. Question ionization enthalpy. Let's see. This is across a, uh, this is across a period, right? You know, across a period, atomic size decreases, right? Atomic size decreases. So, atomic size uh, decreases mean their ionization enthalpy increases. So, we are expecting oxygen is the highest. No, nitrogen is highest. Because nitrogen configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Whereas oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. They are all p3. p3 means half filled. Half filled means stable. From a stable compound, removal of electron is harder. So, nitrogens come first. Then we can go to which one? Oxygen. Okay. Same case. Down the group. Size increases. Same factor. Phosphorus is half fill. Sulfur is not half fill. So, phosphorus is more stable. So, phosphorus then sulfur. Okay. So, here size we have to consider even more than the stability we have to consider. Alright. The element having the atomic number 57 belongs. We are all 57. 57 means we can use this configuration which we studied. Xenon 54, then 4F, 5D, 6S. How we fill 57? 54 already done. Three more electron. Two here, one here. Where the last electron entered? D orbital. So it is a D block element. What is this 57th element? Lanthanum. We are all lanthanum and actinium are actually belongs to D block. After lanthanum and actinium all are belongs to F block means 14 14 element the electronic configuration of the given element that is just above the element with atomic number 43 43 is one of the atomic number they given they asking what is the electronic configuration of the element just above how you can find the uh, atomic number of the just above element minus 18 okay because 18 and 18 rows are there right 18 uh, sorry columns are there so if you if the atomic number is 43 just above element if you want find minus 18 the below element plus 18 so 43 minus 18 atomic number 25 so question which is the atomic number 25 electronic configuration how to write 25 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 and 3d5 this one you will get it where you can able to identify option a right option a 4s2 3d5 4s2 3d5 clear all so these are the most uh, important question from the chapter classification of elements and periodicity in property we almost discussed the major concept of the chapter once again hope it's clear so let's uh, start uh, other chapters also the upcoming video we will uh, we will be there with you so please keep practicing the questions and all so see you there thank you all bye